The next song this evening is going to be number 1157, Lord Rainy Me. If all please stand for the song. Over all the earth you reign on high, every mountain, stream, and every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim, is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams, in my darkest hour. You are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again over every thought, over every word. May my life reflect the beauty of my Lord, because you mean more to me than any earthly thing. So won't you reign in me again? Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? Maybe soon. Our next song this evening is number 1075. <clears throat> The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Next song this evening is going to be number 1118. 1118. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Song would be number 631, 631, if you're following along from your books. <clears throat> we have it. Let us sing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace and give you peace the lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you 
be gracious, the Lord be gracious, gracious unto you. Amen, 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 amen. Number 642, the Lord, the Lord's my shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me in pastures green. Pastures green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by my table, thou hast furnished in presence of my. song will be 1140 1140 and we'll sing it through twice <clears throat> my heart my mind my body my soul I give to you take a Oh, yeah. 
next song will be 1156. We're actually going to start with uh, the chorus as it's written in the book for 1156, and then we'll go into the verse. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Next song will be 1002. If you would go ahead and please stand for this song. 1002, after which we'll have our devotional. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. From heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. You can be seated. Good evening. I am here before you tonight uh, due to lack of preparation. <laughs> I say that because uh, I know some of you, a, a brother came to me today and said, what, what did you do and who did you pay to get onto the Lord's focus three Sundays in a row? And uh, I, I, I didn't do anything except when I scheduled it, I scheduled uh, myself for the first Sunday, and then Brother Chase was on after that, and then I was back in, but Brother Chase was called away, so John was on for three times. And tonight, as I do these schedules a lot of times, I oftentimes will forget to get someone for the uh, uh, devotional or singing night, and so I'm always there as the jump in if uh, someone doesn't show up, so here I am, I'm jumping in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind it. As I said before, I pull uh, double duty for the military and triple duty for the military. I definitely don't mind doing that for the Lord. So uh, please bear with me here today as I present this lesson to you. As I sat down and thought about this lesson tonight, I, you know, I oftentimes think about how to, 
how, what lesson should I give and how should I give that lesson? But oftentimes I find myself saying that's the wrong way kind of to go into the lesson. So what I've done is just spend some time in prayer and I ask God to give me the words to say uh, and hope that uh, it's something that we all are dealing with. But most of the lessons I, I give are, are lessons that are really referenced to things that I'm dealing with myself. And what I want to do tonight with you for a few moments is just pull out a passage of scripture that we've all read, we've all gone over it a number of times, and what I love about the Word of God is that it's living. And when I say it's living, it means each time we look over the Word of God, though we've seen it and read this passage a number of times, we read it again, and for the first time, something else is revealed to us that helps us to become more focused and more directed to, being, uh, to living a God-like uh, like life. So I'm going to read this to you, uh, and I, I'm going to ask you to examine in your lives whether this is truly, uh, this truly has relevancy to your life, to who we are and to what we do, who we believe in and who we have faith in. It is in Psalms chapter 23. You've read it a number of times. It starts, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. When I looked at this passage and I read over it, I thought to myself, is the Lord my shepherd? Do I not want? I find myself sometimes struggling now, even after my military career, trying to figure out what I want to be when I grow up. And I often have so many friends who are on their second retirement and third retirement, and, and, and I ask myself, wow, you know, we, we disguise I want another job because I want to be able to help other people out. But the reality sometimes is that we just want. But the Lord has blessed us. It says, he leadeth me beside still waters. He restores or restoreth my soul. He leadeth me and the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When I think about still waters, I think about the calmness of our lives and how the Lord actually leads us as a shepherd. You know, in the book, A, 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 a Shepherd's Look at Psalms 23, Philip Keller, I believe, is the writer of that book, and he says that sheep do not, you shouldn't lead sheep into running water, water because their wool is so heavy Running water can topple them over and they, they can drown. Listen to what the Bible says that the Lord does. He leads us beside still waters. He restores our soul. Does your, does your soul feel restored? Are you spending enough time in God's word, the still waters of our lives, that your souls are being restored? It says he leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. What path are you taking? Where do you go when your evenings are over, you finish work? Where do you go on your time when you, when you have nothing but time? Is it led by God? Is he leading you? He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Are the paths you taking for his name's sake? Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You know, God may not be asking us to, take, to be missionaries. He may not be asking us to go into a foreign land and teach his word. But some of us, let's be honest, are afraid to teach our neighbors. We're afraid to teach our neighbors, and maybe not just by the words that are there, but even our lives. We're afraid to stick out. Yet the Bible tells us that we're a peculiar people we should be recognized as God's children. We shouldn't have to hold up a sign, but they should see it in our lives. Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And though we are not walking in those valleys of shadow, uh, the valley and shadow of death, we're walking in, 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 in a safe world because of God's blessing, but yet we fear. I love this when I look over God's word and I see it again and I look at my life and I see if my life is parallel to what God teaches. 
The Bible says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Do you see that? Do you feel it? When turmoil and trouble is all around you, do you feel the rod and the staff of the Lord through his word giving you comfort? Or do you, like many others, panic and run like children who have no father? I know I found myself and find myself doing that. And I find myself like the prodigal son coming to myself and realize that I have a father who loves me and cares for me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. My 24 years of military service, there are times that I, I didn't get the promotion I thought I deserved. There are times in my life that I didn't get something I thought I deserved, and, and I knew the rascal that caused that to happen. Because, see, we had been at odds for some times. Sometimes it was a boss. Sometimes it was a co-worker. But in the midst of it, God was blessing me. I had blessings laid before me. I had a meal for my family when I came home. But isn't it amazing how that we, if we, get, if we lose sight of where we are, we can lose sight of the blessings that God places right before us. The Bible says in Psalms 23, verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. No matter what they do to me, God will provide. Wow. Powerful passage of scripture. Powerful words from our Lord and Savior. Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. We can get so caught up that we don't even realize that we have more than we ask for. Ask the young man and the young woman, maybe in some foreign country, India, or wherever they might be, who don't even know what running water is. Would love to have a clean bath to take a, to take a bath in. Do you realize we have places to park our cars? We have homes for our cars. Keeps our cars out of shelter, the shelter of rain and, and hail and snow, and they yet don't even have a place to sleep. My cup runneth over. I know I've lost sight of that before. The Bible says this in ending that passage. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a wonderful thing to read. What a wonderful word God leaves us, telling us, that if we keep our eye on the prize and we realize how blessed we really are, goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. If you look at Psalm chapter 23, we see God before us, leading us. We see God with us, comforting us. And we see God behind us, driving us on to victory. What a great father. What a wonderful God. What a wonderful word. If this has re re relevancy to your life, and you're excited and glad to be a child of God tonight, and you know that you feel that comfort, to God be the glory. But if you've lost sight, like some of us have, and you want to fix that, you want to get that right in your life, you want to be able to have that peace that surpasseth all understanding. You know, the Bible says that. It says, be anxious for nothing. Listen to this. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. And the peace that surpasseth all understanding shall guard your heart. Folks, that means when the world is shaking and everybody's running, God's children should be at peace. I know Jesus was during the storm. I know he was, and we are to be like Christ. Think about it. If you were in a burning building and the building was burning down, would you listen to somebody who was screaming off the top of their head, the building's burning, the building's, get out, get out! 
Or would you listen to somebody that says, folks, just come this way? We call that in the military, military bearing, right, Brother Harris? You look for somebody with military bearing. You look for somebody who had a peace that surpassed all understanding. You see, when you look at Congress and you look at the things that are going on in our world, when you see the, the, the innocent being unjustly treated, we can be calm and know that God is still in control. This is important. Every one of us I know deal with this. If you find yourself stray from the truth, that you've left his word, you've, you've lost that peace that God has given us, for whatever reason it might be, we're here as your brother and sister to encourage you to come back, to come back to God, that we all can rejoice as we live here day by day and we can rejoice knowing that we're going home someday like our brother John Kaufman and so many others that have gone on. If you're not a child of God and you're here today, I want you to know that God's word is he's a God of promise and he has a place for us. And you have a chance to accept God into your heart and to, to have him wash away your sins so that you too can have remission of those sins. That cancer that is in us can be wiped away. If you choose not, there is not a legal system in our society today that will protect you or guard your heart or guard you when the day of judgment comes. The time is now to make it right with God, for we do not know what will happen when we leave these doors. If you want to do that, please come. While together we stand and sing the song of invitation. The pathway of sin, so long I have trod, till Jesus came from above, from realms above. He spoke peace to me, oh glory to God. What mercy, what wondrous love, what wondrous love. Oh glory to God, he's holding my hand. He safely will guide, I know. He lifted me up and caused me to stand, oh. That's why I love him, so I love him so. Though friends in this land may turn me away, yet Christ will my prayers attend, he will attend. I'm glad in my heart that now I can say that Jesus is my best friend, he's my best friend. Oh, glory to God, he's holding my hand. He safely will guide, I know. He lifted me up and caused me to stand. Oh, that's why I love him, so I love him so. I'm happy today while going along. The Savior is kind and true, so kind and true. He lifted me up and gave me a song. I sing it the whole day through, the whole day through. Oh, glory to God, he's holding my hand. He safely will guide, I know. He lifted me up and caused me to stand, oh, that's why I love him, so I love him so. Oh, glory to God, he's holding my hand, he safely will guide, I know. He lifted me up and caused me to stand, oh. That's why I love him, so I love him so. Amen. You may be seated.
And good evening, everyone. <laughs> Sister Lavender comes. She's asking prayers of God, and she's asking prayers of the church. She says that I would like to ask for the prayers of the church for my mother. Her mother's name is Odessa Walton. Uh, she has been diagnosed with kidney cancer. She lives in Texas. Uh, she indicated that she'd had uh, one of the kidneys, the left one removed earlier, and now they found cancer in the right one. So she's asking for prayers for God's intervention, for God's peace, God's comfort, and God's healing. Let us pray. Our blessed Heavenly Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for the love that you show us each and every day of our lives. We thank you for the blessing that you pour upon us each and every day of our lives. Heavenly Father, we are blessed with many loved ones, Father, especially mothers and fathers and children. And Heavenly Father, we come before you at this time on behalf of Sister Lavender. She's concerned, the family's concerned, as they should be, Father, because of her mother, Odessa, uh, what she has been going through with her medical uh, condition with her kidneys as it stands, with one removed, Father, and then now the other one has been discovered with cancer. And Father, we know all things are in your power. All, all things are in your power. And Father, we know that we commend ourselves and our loved ones to you, Father, that all things will be done according to your will and according to your time. Father, we're praying for comfort. Father, we're praying for comfort because, Father, we know, as was said in the lesson, you are in control. You have total control of every aspect of our life, every aspect of our thinking, every aspect of our action. And, Father, we ask for your intervention here. Father, we ask for comfort for Odessa. We ask for comfort of Lavender and the rest of the family, Father, that they commend all things into your hands, all things into your power, Father, and say things will be done according to your will. Because, Father, our prayer is always, not what we will, but your will be done. And, Father, thank you for allowing us to have this mindset. Thank you for allowing us to have this strength. Father, thank you that we have this family here, Father, that can pray to you on behalf of Sister Lavender, on behalf of Odessa, on behalf of all the family, Father. Father, thank you. Thank you for the power that you have, the grace that you have, the love that you have, and the mercy that you have. Father, we love you so very much. These things we pray and thank you for in Christ Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Our song before communion will be number 764. 764. <clears throat> We have it. Let us sing. When we meet in sweet communion, where the feast divine is spread, hearts are brought in closer union while partaking. Feast all else surpassing wondrous love for you and me. While we feast, Christ gently whispers, Do this in my memory. God. measure love and gave the best of him bought us with that matchless treasure yea for us his life was give precious feast all else Surpassing wondrous love for me and ye. While we feast, Christ gently whispers, Do this in my memory.
the blood of Christ. Revelation chapter 1 tells us that it's in Jesus, it describes it as him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom of priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Over in 1 John chapter 1, again it speaks of the blood of Christ. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. When we gather together and we take the Lord's Supper, it's a remembrance. It's a remembrance of the body and the blood of Christ. There, there's some that teach that um, you're taking the literal blood of Christ when you take the cup. That's not what's happening. We're taking a remembrance. The literal blood of Christ is what was shed on the cross, and that's what cleanses us from, from sin, Christ's blood. The cup that we take doesn't forgive sins. It is a remembrance, it's an honoring the eternal sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. After the prayer, those that need to partake of the Lord's Supper, if you would please raise your hand. Please bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you now thanking you for this bread, which to us represents Christ's body that was hung on that cross to pay for our sins. Lord, we recognize that Jesus did not have to do that nor did you have to give your son. But your love for us and Jesus' love for us made it happen. And Lord, we thank you so much for that love. We pray that you'll help us to share that love with everyone we come in contact with. For those that are partaking of the Lord's Supper now, Lord, we pray that you'll help them to focus on our minds. We ask that you'll help them to reflect and to examine themselves as they partake. We pray that they'll partake in a worthy manner. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Again, whoever needs to partake, and I just raise your hand after the prayer. Heavenly Father, we 
Remember now the blood of your son Jesus that was shed for our sin through the fruit of the vine here tonight. Lord, help us to take this in a worthy manner. Lord, as sinners, we had no chance. We were condemned, but you gave your only son to die for, for our sins. Heavenly Father, we pray we keep this in mind every day and every minute. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew chapter 6. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Same time Jesus also said these words. Take care. And be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Please pray with me. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we take this time to offer back some of that which you've given unto us. You've given unto us so freely, so abundantly, so much more than we deserve. Lord, each of us, as we give in return, I pray, Lord, that we give with an open heart and happy heart, that the funds that we give will be used in a proper manner to further your word, to help others. In Jesus Christ's most holy name we pray. Amen. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in Strong. 
triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on me be ashamed. Yea, let none that wait on me be ashamed. O oh, my God, I trust in This next song, There is a God. Our God, He is alive. If you would please be standing for this song. There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He tinted skies with heavenly hue and framed the worlds with his great might. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live and we survive. From the star God created man, he is our God, the great I am. final song before the closing prayer will be God's family. We're part of a family that's been born again. Part of the family whose love knows no end. For Jesus has saved us and made us his own. Now we're part of the family that's on its way home. And sometimes we laugh together, sometimes we cry. Sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs. Sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven, God's family, and the sun go before us, we'll all meet again, just inside the city. As we enter in, there'll be no more parting. With Jesus we'll be together forever, God's family. And sometimes we laugh 
together, sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs, sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get Dear Father, Holy Lord, Father, help me to remember that you are light, you are pure light. Help me to recall in all ways, Father, that you are Lord God and you are holy. Help me, Father, to walk with you the best of my ability. Give me the strength to turn aside from sin. Give me the will to turn aside from sin. Great God, I ask that you bless your Lord's people. You bless us so much, Father. And I pray you work in our lives, Father, to shape us transform us and build us into the men and women that you desire us to be, holy God. I thank you, Father, for the confession that was made this morning with Wyatt. And uh, grateful to have my new brother working by my side, working by all of our sides, Father, in your kingdom. Father, for Lavender and her mother, I pray, healing, peace, and uh, comfort, holy God. But I also want to pray for the my brother Dave Cooper and the Smiths, holy God, I pray that you keep them in your good care, Father, and Guide them and care for them, holy God. Use us all in your service, Lord. Help us to emulate our brother Jesus by serving diligently and faithfully and wholeheartedly, God, giving ourselves as you've taught us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.